if only we can talk politics because uh, oh be very man i mean technically we can talk about it right now we just don't we just edit it out uh it's okay we'll talk about it afterwards or whenever is this the 14th episode or, or the 13th episode this i do not know i haven't looked at it at all since i started doing you should probably look at that yeah, I'll look at it Anyways, welcome to the next episode of Pause Menu Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Etoy20, and I'm joined by the other host. Ali Braha, hello. We're back after, after a long break. Oh yeah, very, very long break. Uh, this is episode uh, 13? 12? Nope, 12. 12? 12. Okay, okay, Wow, we're closing in our 13th episode. The unlucky <laughs> episode. The cursed episode. Okay, oh god, okay. what are my controls here? Okay, that's... That's not... Oh god, that's not, uh... Probably you guys are confused with the format here and why we're playing a game. It's because, uh... We kind of just decided a time on the spot because I'm basically finished with all college stuff for the most part. Oh wait, are we shooting? Uh, I'm not shooting. I mean, if you, you can, if you want to, I'm just like. Okay, we'll just exploring. wait. Yeah. So, I'm just so basically, uh, we decided we're gonna do an unpaused pause menu podcast. <laughs> that makes sense. Just to switch talk things up. About really anything. Yeah. yeah. So this this show does not, or this episode does not have a format. We're just we're literally just playing. You know, we're just we're playing we're this just game. Relaxing. Yeah, the game that we're playing in the background is... Oh, what is this? The game that we're playing in the background is Titanfall 2, a.k.a. Apex Legends 1. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I just offended so many Titanfall players with that statement. Uh, you offended me, sir. Because <laughs> this basically replaced... Oh, well, in quotes, replaced Titanfall 3. It was like, oh, bro, are you kidding me? Yeah. But it was also confirmed by the developers that there's always... There's still that chance for this to... For a Titanfall 3 to come out. So that makes me very... Not excited, but hopeful. I love this game very much so. Yeah. I think this is probably the best shooter I've played behind Doom Eternal. Because that game is just so good. But multiplayer-wise, this is probably the best shooter. In my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a game that I've never really tried out uh, as much. Um... What's it called? So I'm like doing the... How do I exit out of this? <laughs> exit out of what? Exit out of uh, the screens or whatever. Hold up. Or the... Okay, there we go. Just go up. Um, yeah, I'm basically just... Oh, hello. <laughs> I forgot those executions. I'm just trying out like I'm just trying out the different um the different ways to oh there it is well okay I'm trying out different ways on how to actually like move my character similar to how I would move in Apex. Uh, I forgot this uh, wiring in this game. What's your controls? It's evolved right now. So it's evolved, like it's like yeah. Oh, I mean, well, for this game, it's evolved, but I normally would have jump slash wall wall ride wall rush. I don't know on X, uh, for because Apex doesn't have wall running, so I don't have it on. I don't have it on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Because I play from very different controls. Well, so somewhat. Usually, everyone else. Yeah, let me just go on. Uh, evolved. Yeah. Sorry about this, guys. We're just like <laughs> messing around because I don't know this game. <laughs> at all yes where I on the other hand have played a ton of this and the frontier defense mode like I think I like maxed out the level well, I don't think you can max out a level but I have a very high level on Papa Scorch on frontier defense and then I don't have, really have a main for the multiplayer besides like I probably play a lot of Ion when it was still uh, OP I guess yeah, I never, I never played this game that much when I was, uh, when I was into it. Mainly because I, I don't know, I, what, what was I, what was I playing back then? Instead of Titanfall, I don't know, Fortnite. Uh, well, no, it wasn't Fortnite because I was playing a lot of Fortnite with you. Overwatch? Uh, was I just not into Titanfall then? Overwatch. I have no clue. 
Yeah. I know it was mostly just me, Jian, and then uh, our friend Kyle that were playing. Yeah, I, I definitely know I didn't like the... What's it called? I didn't like the, the zombies mode in this game. Yeah. Yeah, I, we're not zombies, but like it's the... Uh, the defense mode. Yeah, I, like was, I wasn't a fan of it because I didn't know what the hell was going on. Yeah. So... But I mean, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. So we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, or, or at least like... Oh! oh! You got it? I actually got it with the with the drop. Oh, let me see. Let me see what this is. Oh, okay. I was I was like, did he quickscope me? Oh my god. I don't, did I quickscope? I don't even know. But yeah. Uh, so, now that we're done messing with the controls, which I still will after this game. Um, we don't have a structure, so we're just going to talk about anything at all. Like anything and, and everything. Uh, with some things to avoid, because I know today's a very big day. November. Yes. What is today? November 9th? November 7th? 8th? 7th. 7th. 7th? Yeah, today's a very big day for uh, a, a certain. Our country. Yeah, a, a, a certain topic. Um, yeah, that's all about to say for that one. <laughs> we can't yes. talk about politics, guys. We're sorry. Well, We're... well, we can, but we just choose not to because it's very. That's the nice. Yeah, maybe maybe when we grow bigger and we're like, yeah, we definitely stand for this. We'll we'll talk about politics. But for now, since we're still small, you know, we you're gonna avoid talking about this. Um, what can we talk about though? What do you want to talk about first, rap? What's been well, going first, on? How, how have you been, dude? I know I've been doing a lot of stuff for the past month, so I can't really. I haven't really been caught up with everyone else. I've yeah. been stuck in my room, so. I, up with you? I've been fine. I've been uh, applying, grinding out through my master's program. Pretty much the same thing. Uh, been getting into a lot of Final Fantasy fourteen recently. Because uh, okay. our friends, uh, Kyle and Lyle, got into it. Uh, as well as um, Kyra. So, I got into it as well. Uh, it's it's pretty nice so far. Uh, I, I'm still not as attached to it as I am with, with World of Warcraft. But, I think like once I get into like the higher, higher level stuff, I... I think I might actually like it. Um, so it's an MMORPG, right? Yeah. Interesting. Are there MMO. different like classes and stuff? Yeah, there's there's different classes. It's 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 weird in how it's set up in the sense that one class is one role specifically. So if you're a paladin, you have to be a tank. If you're uh, a black mage, you have to be a DPS. You can't be like, oh, if I'm a paladin, I can be a tank or a DPS. Or if I'm a gunbreaker, I can be a DPS or a tank. No, it's like you gotta be like you gotta be a tank or you gotta be like a specific role basically. But on the flip side, oh, what is this? Uh, you can do. On the flip side, you can basically be any class that you want. So if I want to switch from being a tank to a ranged caster DPS, I can do so if I really wanted to. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. That's, yeah, I mean it's it's fine. It's fine. But I'm I'm not in love with it yet though. That's the thing. It's it's very. How do I say this? It's it's nice, but like. Uh, what's it called? It's nice, but. It's nice, but like I feel like it's the the world has just not attracted me yet. It's not it's not I'm not attached to it. You know, unlike with WoW, it's like I'm very, I'm very attached to the world. With when it comes to FF14, I'm it's just like, it's there. I'm just doing through the quest, but like, it hasn't grabbed me yet. I understand that, that's for sure. Like with me right now, uh, I just figured out my friend has The Witcher and Dark Souls 3 on hard copy. So I was like, okay, there's a couple of weeks before I get the, P uh, the PS5. So, I'll... And my free time, my time has just opened up like a ton because after college stuff. So I was like, okay, you know what, I'll try out The Witcher. I heard it's pretty good. Yeah. But I'm playing through it, and it's like, it's interesting, but it hasn't, like, hooked me yet, you know? Yeah. Like, it was the same thing for Bloodborne, too. It's like, uh, the game is fun, but the atmosphere, the Victorian Lovecraft, oh, I love Lovecraft, but the Victorian theme is like, it's not really me. It's cool, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, it's just not, it's your not thing. like Dark Souls yeah. and stuff like that. Would you say you're more into, like, the Western, like, medieval stuff, or you're more into, like, the... the... Well, I guess, like, what genre are you, like, most into? Like, in terms of the theme? Uh, the theme... I'm definitely a sucker for, like, medieval stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, Skyrim, Dark Souls, uh, 
the new newest God of War type thing. Yeah. Norse mythology and stuff, that's like my jam. My favorite atmosphere. Oh, uh, okay. Because, uh, main reason why I like playing those games is because one, one of the animes, this is going to sound really bad for people who are really into anime, but I like SAO, like, a lot. Yeah. And it, it was that type of anime that introduced me to the genre. It's like, oh my god, this seems so cool. The MMORPG, you have to level up your character with uh, armor and different um, different armor pieces, right? You just level up your character. I thought that was so appealing to me, so I was like, it's pretty cool, I'll give it a shot. Then I played, uh, there's not a lot of games I actually played beforehand, but when I started playing God of War, that was pretty cool. And then Ito introduced me to Skyrim, which, like, my god, I yeah, played a, a lot. That was a whole new other world for you. Yes, and there's still so much I have to do. Oh my god, yeah. Like, oh my god. So, so I, cool. So I quit Skyrim. It's like, man, there's so many to do. I gotta not do any of this. I gotta, I gotta do, I gotta do something with my life. I don't wanna be yeah, anything. Yeah, for real. Well. Yeah. We gotta, gotta do something. Like, I played a month straight. That's not even like exaggerated. I know. I remember when I when I played that game and I was just playing that game nonstop. I would unlock trophies at like 3 a.m. in the morning, because that's how long I've been playing it. Like I, I, went over, I went over to my friend's house and he's like, "Yeah, let me just check your trophies, man." And he sees me, he sees me unlocking like some of the trophies, and, it, and the the time says three forty or like, not three forty. It's like three thirteen a.m. I'm like, dude, yeah, I'm addicted to this game. I, that's all I've been, uh, that's all I've been playing. Yes, so good because like they have so many different things you can do, and I've only like scratched the surface. I haven't even played any of the DLCs because I have the special edition, right? Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. I know how to make my character overpowered and stuff, but I still haven't done any of the extra stuff. So I'm excited for that whenever I get to that. Yeah. Are you... Well, what's your what's your plan in terms of, like, what games are you going to be playing soon? Or, um... Okay, so... <laughs> my, my near future plans for when the PS5 comes out, I'm going to replay some of the remasters. Uh, I'm definitely going to play God of War again. Mm -hmm. Um... I want to play Detroit Become Human again, uh, this time by trying to achieve the worst ending possible. <laughs> uh, what else? What other games are on there? Um, Persona, I'm, like the vanilla version, I'm probably going to play that again. Again? Cause it's on. Yeah, I don't see why not. Dang. I mean... Is it, isn't that like your fourth time playing the game? Yes. <laughs> Damn, dude. If I truly like a game, I think I can play it forever. I played like God of War four times already as well. Yeah. So, uh, that I will play. Uh, what other games are on there? I know the. Didn't they just announce that the Black Ops DLCs are gonna be there for free? Black Ops uh, 3. Oh yeah, yeah, the uh, the Zombies Chronicles DLC. Yes. I think so, it's gonna be uh, backwards compatible. Uh, so that yes. game's gonna come alive again, in a sense. Oh, for sure. Like, I have that, I have the, all the DLCs already, but I want to play it again in new gen, so uh, I'm going to try and beat all the Easter eggs solo, or all the ones that I can solo. Yeah. Uh, again. Because I feel like the Black Ops 3 maps are way harder than the BO4. Uh -huh. And I solo, soloed almost every map there. Uh, so, it's another added challenge for, I guess I would say veteran, right? Veteran zombie players you like me? Yeah. I've been playing for a while. So, how do you so how do you feel about the the PlayStation exclusives for Black Ops Cold War? I don't know if you've you've been reading or like been caught up with some of the news. Oh, it was like the different game modes, right? So different like, game uh... modes. Um, they they have like what's it called? What do they have? It the custom classes. You get two extra for being a PlayStation member. Interesting. Yeah. So that I don't know how I feel about that because it's like. Like, before, it was just really just, like, an entire game mode that, you know, isn't really that big of a deal. Um, well, for some people, anyways. I, I don't I don't feel like the survival mode for um, for Modern Warfare really popped off. So, it really wasn't that big of a deal. But now, they're having things like custom classes as part of their incentive to be a PlayStation member. Um, or to, to play, to, to buy Black Ops Cold War on a PlayStation console. They even have it, so it's like... They they have a trailer called the Sony Advantage over, um, that the, the official like Sony, Sony YouTube uploaded and it's like uh, 
I don't know how I feel about this, man. Like, it's... I, I know it's only two custom classes, but, like, that's kind of a big deal. You know, that's... Like, so does that mean that PC and Xbox just has, like, two less custom classes? Is, is that what it means? Or, like, is... is awesome. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, oh, I need to go. I think, from a business standpoint, it's sort of... Well, I don't know. It seems like a good idea, because you're drawing more people to play on your side. But yeah. then you're also blocking probably a ton of other players and other platforms from playing, because some are very extreme, and they'd be like, Oh, really? You're going to do this? I'm just not going to play the game at all. Uh, so I don't know if... Does the classes like provide any like significant advantage over other players, or is it just a different class? No, like a, like a custom class slot. Oh... You get two extra ones for being a PlayStation. I mean... So, I mean, what I don't know is, does that mean that, like, PlayStation gets 12 and the rest gets 10? Or does that mean that all of us that's not a PlayStation gets 8 and everybody else gets... Or PlayStation gets 10? I'm not sure. Like, I, I never really started using a ton of class slots until Modern Warfare. Yeah. Uh... <coughs> So, it's definitely big, like, if they remove two... Well, I think they should just, like, it should be, like, 10 for all and then 12. Because that way it isn't too much of a difference. But if it's, like, 10 and 8, like, if it's just normal for PS5 and just two less for everyone else. Yeah. I think that would be really messed up. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I mean... I feel like there's going to be a lot of people on the PS5 anyways. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm. that's weird. I, I don't know. I feel like it's, it's not good that they're making custom class exclusives because that's an actual game gameplay mechanic. Modes I can kind of understand. Well, no, actually, no. I I don't think modes should be exclusive either, because I feel like that's just gonna kill. That's that's just gonna kill that mode specifically, right? If you can't do crossplay on that mode, then it's not going to pop up as much because no one people want to play with other people and nowadays a lot of people are buying uh, a pc over like an xbox you know so like it's even less incentive to play some of those modes so yeah um yeah i i i, I don't like it uh with the custom class uh changes but i don't know we'll see are What's you gonna... the game mode uh, was that the 2v2 they were talking about? It's the, exclusive to us. The Yeah, like the, the, two the two co op zombies. The two player co op uh, zombies. Yeah. So if okay. I get a, if I get on a PC, I can't play with you. <laughs> yeah. On that one. I can still play regular zombies, I think. But So wait, so then what's. what's Do you know what's the difference? Because like, we can always just queue up like on a private private server of zombies just the two of us anyways it's like is there different maps for the 2v2 no this is a different uh, game mode different zombies oh, game mode it? really huh yeah it's a it's a playstation exclusive game mode for zombies huh that's kind of cool i think it's not cool for everyone else but yeah. it's cool for me I guess. it's exclusive for the entire year which, just a year that's which, a long time yeah which means that as a pc player or as an xbox player you won't get it until the next Call of Duty comes out. Yeah. Which sucks if you want to be, you know, if you want to duos that shit. But, True. Yeah. But it's a I separate like demo, though. I feel some way that, like, the modders for zombies are going to figure out a way to create a game mode on PC modded just to replicate that game mode. Yeah, probably. But then, like, you know, not a lot of people will be able to access it access it because it's not official in a sense yeah true. yeah but yeah i'm indifferent i'm not sure i guess we'll see i i don't know i've been i've been kind of on defense about buying the next call of duty like i still i still want to just because i want to keep my skills up when it comes to snd and when it comes to call of duty in general you know especially like next year if they ever come out with modern warfare quote-unquote 2 you know, I'm definitely going to get that one. Um, yes. But, like, I just don't know. I, I just don't know if this just Call of Duty is worth it. Especially because, like, now our squad is kind of, like, it's kind of gone. <laughs> it's just going to be the two of us. Um, and I know you're playing other games, too. So, it's, like, I don't know how long, like, 
will be playing uh, together for this game. So it's like, should I still get this year's Call of Duty? I don't know. I've been on the fence about it. I know for me, I always just buy it anyways, because it's mostly for the zombies that I play for. Yeah. Uh, so I'm always just going to buy it. Uh, unless I just remove it altogether, <laughs> like with Modern Warfare. But Yeah. Um, but for Black Ops series, I always just buy it. Even if the multiplayer is kind of ass, uh, I always have something else to play or something else to do. Especially with this new zombies mode, like, I know they're changing up a lot of core stuff, but also adding back some, some fan favorites, uh, like with the perk system. Uh, pretty sure Pack-a-Punch is still the same. New story, which is pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, well... well I, not new story. Continued. Continued story. I, I, I've seen some, not leaks, but they're like hints about how it's connected to the old... Uh, Old level. Yes. Here, I kind of want to change my class. Can you kill me? What happened? I survived <laughs> it? Hold on. There we go. There you go. I was like, wait, hold up. How did I survive that? Yeah. Uh, what was I saying? So, yeah, it's sort of the same story, but continued with different characters. I don't know. I don't really mind. Yeah. Uh, New gun class thing, like all guns apparently are going to be overpowered. Yeah, uh, you can so start off with an cool. assault rifle now, right? Yeah. That's... So my theory on that is like, if they're going to allow us to start with any gun, it's the game is like, once you enter in, it's probably going to be fast paced immediately. Because as you saw in the trailer, right? So the dude's mm -hmm. walking through uh, whatever map it is, yeah. trying to open power, evidently. And then once he reaches the power room, there's just a bunch of, like, um, non-hostile zombies just waiting to be aggravated, right? Yeah. So if the map starts out with a bunch of zombies in it already, I'm assuming that's why <laughs> they have us start with any weapon. Because it's going to be just fast-paced right into the action. You think that they're just not like going to have... Cool. You think they're just not, not, not going to have, like, walking zombies in general? Just, like, everyone's running it right off the bat? Ooh. I don't know. I feel like they're going to be like at a mild sprint until they get to the higher grounds from the start. Yeah. Like once you aggravate them, they're going to start, you know, coming towards Sprinting. you somewhat fast. Do you think they should add health to the zombies? Like a lot more health? I mean, I guess they already do with like every single round, but I don't know. I feel like watching zombies gameplay, I uh, feel like the zombies still kind of have like low HP. But then again, when people do Easter eggs, they usually do it like in the lower levels. Because it's not smart to do it in the higher levels, you know. So that's actually one of the many complaints that zombie players have is that when you get up to the higher rounds, it feels like your guns are, or at least for BO3 and then BO4, uh, they were kind of useless. Like even the wonder weapons <coughs> didn't do anything. Uh, bless you. Thank uh, you. And so I know Noah Jake talked about this a couple times on his sh uh, channel, but that. What they mentioned in the trailer is that they want to bring back the experience that most zombie players love, which is just, you know, killing zombies uh -huh. and in a, in a cool fashion way. So I assume that they're just going to make all guns overpowered because they just want to focus on killing zombies at an efficient rate at all levels or any rounds. Yeah. So I think they're going to keep the zombie health the same. Like, obviously, you can knife round one, double knife round two, and just escalates after that. Yeah. But once we pack a bunch of upgrades, our guns are just going to be super overpowered. Uh, and yeah, that's how I think it's going to go. That's how I would like it to go. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be interesting then to see like uh, like this this, sh this small shift in the zombies gameplay from starting off with a pistol to having like an actual gun right off the bat and being able to use your custom classes right off the bat. Uh, which makes sense lore-wise because you're... you're I think they're they're kind of going back to the original story in a sense of like, instead of like your like your four super special soldiers, you are actually um, just people. Just yeah, just 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 soldiers going through like a zombie apocalypse kind of thing, right? Because that's how the original zombies was. It's just four random soldiers in a bunker surviving a zombie uh, a zombie outbreak in I think it was Germany that that it happened. Yes, in? Germany. yeah. Yeah. See, uh, for me, like that was like super interesting because it's like, oh my god, like they can totally, like they don't have to tell like this 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 grand story of like 
a German scientist, a, a Japanese guy with a with a machete, not machete, uh, uh, a katana, and like tank Debsy and <laughs> Nikolai. I don't know. I, I feel like the the whole story of having like like random soldiers going through like a like a zombie apocalypse kind of thing was was pretty cool. Um, Definitely. And I like the idea of the original zombies map, where they have it's just a bunker. And it's not like the current zombies map where it's it's like a section of like a city or like a section of like a specific area and you have to run around to survive. This one's more so like you have to defend this bunker in order to survive kind of thing. I, I like that that concept of like defending an area um, with, with the original map. I, I feel like that's something that, that they should probably play around a little bit more. Like maybe have like turret upgrades... Uh, mountable, well, okay, not mountable weapons, because we know how well that worked out in Modern Warfare. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you yeah. know what I mean, like maybe like some like a mountable LMG or something, you know, like. We'll get next time. Uh, That's what I was thinking, like, because uh, some in some of the Easter eggs, um, they would have like some lockdown areas, right? So to complete the step, you have to defend this area for a certain amount of time, right? Yeah. So some of those, but it's not like uh, what's that map? Uh, da 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 da. Knocked, Doctor and Toe, in like the first map. Yeah. Where you're just you know, in a base. Which I think would be pretty cool. Like, uh, that's why I liked um, Tower Defense for, for here, Titanfall 2. Because it was basically just this you're protecting an area with your Titans, and uh, you can set up traps everywhere, you can upgrade your Titans as you go. Yeah. Right? So that's why it was so appealing to me for that game mode. But for zombies, I think it'd be pretty cool. Like, maybe the. I don't. I don't actually know the specifics for uh, the two v two or the two versus P or what the hell am I saying? Two versus the what are the character? What are those like NPCs? Two, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I think it would be pretty cool. I'm just excited to see where they take the Easter eggs and how they improve the gameplay and what you do for different quests and stuff. Yeah, it's been a while since I've invested myself in a zombies game, so. If I do end up getting Black Ops Cold War and I do end up playing the zombies, which I most likely will, I feel like it'd be a disservice if I don't play zombies. You know, like um, I don't if I, if I don't play if I get this new Call of Duty and I don't try out zombies at least once, that would be a very huge disservice. Um, only thing though is that if I'm do, if I do get it on PC, which I most likely will, because I don't know about getting it for, getting it for PS4. You know, I, I think it's fine, but. Historically speaking, uh, last gen consoles for the newer Call of Duties didn't really perform as well, especially with like Black Ops Three. I feel like it didn't perform that well with that game. Um, uh -huh. what's it called? Uh, I I'm a little bit on the fence of getting on the PlayStation Four. I think it'll be fine this time around. Uh, but I'd rather get it on PC and just install everything and then later on delete. Uh, the other other experiences later on. So I think after I'm done with the campaign, I'll delete that. After I'm done with zombies... Well, I'm probably not going to delete zombies, but multiplayer I'm going to have to, to keep. I just hope I don't, I don't have to install Warzone. No, you won't have to. Because I think it's going to still be its separate... From my understanding, it's going to be its own app still. They're just going to um, update the weapons... Uh, probably update a map or something, if yeah. I understood that correctly. So, it's still its own thing, but updated. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they do that too, like what they started doing late in Modern Warfare. Where, like you just said, for the PS5, you can choose and delete some parts that you don't need campaign. Once you're done, just delete it. Uh, multiplayer, if I don't need it. I just have it be a separate thing. Yeah, it's going to take more time to download, and it might be a little tedious, but I'd rather have it that way to save space, you know? Yeah. Hmm. But we'll see. There's also Cyberpunk coming out in like a month after that. Or yeah, I got pushed uh, back again. <laughs> alleged, <laughs> allegedly coming out. Oh, man. I was so excited to play it, too. Like, I, I was I, like part of... Another reason why I wasn't going to get Black Ops Cold War was because I wanted to play Cyberpunk first before uh, Cold War. But now that they're pushing it back, it's like, well, 
I guess I'm gonna be playing Cold War first, or Kingdom Hearts first, actually, before I play Cyberpunk. Um, which I don't know. Um, what are your thoughts on Cyberpunk, actually? So, I find it really cool. It 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 just seems like a futuristic GTA to me. Uh, a whole other world you get to explore, different lore, different story. Uh, it just seems very cool, especially with the. Uh, Customized genitalia. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't have much to say because it's not one of the games I was like paying attention to. Uh huh. I was more paying attention to like Demon Souls and uh... yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just Demon Souls. Demon Souls. <laughs> Devil May Cry, the the new special edition. Mm -hmm. Oh, you I will not be getting, but uh, I'd still watch it. It's pretty cool. Oh, I didn't know you can like ride this. That's cool. Um, Oh, well, nice. Let me see if that was a quick scope. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's it called? So, the thing about Cyberpunk, uh, I, I'm kind of excited for it, but at the same time, I'm not, like, hyped for it like other people. Like, looking at the Cyberpunk... Uh, cyber, cyber Reddit. Looking at the Cyberpunk uh, Reddit, it feels like a lot of people put as much hype and expectation in this game as they did with uh, No Man's Sky. And that's concerning, because, you know, like, how <laughs> No Man's Sky initially uh, yeah, was published. Yeah, we know that too. Yeah. No, I mean, apparently No Man's Sky is, is better now, which is which is good. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just that I feel like a lot of times people put a lot of expectations in certain games um, to an unrealistic extent. Like, a game could be actually, like, really, really good. Or, like, it's still pretty a pretty good game, right? Cyberpunk could be a really good game. But the amount of expectations that people uh, set upon this game, I feel like it's just going to end up making a lot of people disappointed by the end product. At least that's how I feel, right? Because people, people are looking at this game as if it's, like, the second life of, like, current-gen consoles. It's like a second-life RPG, in a sense, where you can get to live out do whatever you want in in a cyberpunk world and it's like that's not really how it's gonna be like you can you have a freedom to do a lot of things but it's not like it's an elder scrolls game you know where you can do whatever quests you want and you know live out however you want to in a sense you know there's flaws with, with an elder scrolls game too uh you can you can kill me if you want to i'm gonna switch classes um but yeah it's like people just people just put a lot of like expectations with this game and i feel like that's not a good thing you know it's it's never a good thing for that game really because um, I never like for like movies or any. <gasps> That's a quick scope. Nice. They just get like for any uh, any game or any movie. I never put my expectations too high because if I do so, I would be overly disappointed. So I guess that's why I'm always just satisfied with anything I watch or play. Yeah. Um, so that's why I think it's a shame that some people just put it to such a high standard mm -hmm. that eventually or possibly they're, they'll be really disappointed. Um, so it sucks to hear that for a game that seems so promising, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it like even, I think it's going to be good either way. Um, the, the only thing though is that it's not going to live up to a lot of people's expectations. Yeah, like you're right. Like it's not... Like, people putting, like, a lot of expe ex expectations in anything is going to end up ruining it. Because now you're going to start having imaginations of what the game actually is going to be about and what the game actually is going to, like, provide to you, right? Because at the end of the day, it's still a video game. There's still limitations of what you can put into it. Um, nothing's ever going to be, like... You can get close to something that's, like, a second life, but, like, it's never going to be... It's, it's never going to, like... I don't know. It's never going to be, like, super realistic in a sense. Which, which is what I feel like a lot of people are sort of looking into it as, you know? And it's not supposed to be. I don't feel like it's supposed to be. It's obviously a game that takes place further into the future. Yeah. So. But people are expecting, uh, like, a like a realistic, like, what do you call that? Realistic sort of life simulation with it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I get... It's like by playing this game, I get to feel what it's like living in a cyberpunk reality kind of thing. I feel like that's how people are looking. I feel like that's how some people are looking into it. Because I remember like months ago, they were asking devs like, can you do this? Can you do that? And it's like, guys, calm down. It's it's an RPG. It's not like a, 
It's not a second life simulator kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, that's that's how I feel about that. Uh, another another thing too is how people are like really, really, really <sighs> trying to find this, like a nice way to say this. People are. People are putting a lot of stock into into CD Projekt Red, uh, you know, because CD Projekt Red does have a lot of goodwill for people, uh, because of uh, what's it called? Because of uh, The Witcher Three, right? You know, it's it's a huge, it's a it's a largely successful game. They're very they're very like you know pro consumer kind of thing, um, but because of that, I feel like people are putting them in a very high pedestal. And the thing is that you should never put any game developer or any game company in that sort of pedestal, right? And like nowadays, like people are like people are pissed that they're that they're that, uh, they're delaying Cyberpunk, so now they're not as respected as they used to be. But you know, you can kind of say the same thing about Blizzard, where Blizzard used to be like the most respected uh, PC gaming developer uh, company, but now you know they don't res- people don't respect them as much because of the some of the practices that, that they've been doing with when it comes to games like Overwatch, World of Warcraft, Diablo, etc. So. You know, I'm someone who is like a huge Blizzard fan, and I still am to to, to a certain extent. But I've learned that you should never really put any company into like that high of a pedestal, because no no good company no good company will last that long, or in, in the sense of like no good company will be perfect. You know, the the best company out there will will always make mistakes. That that's already happened with a lot of companies nowadays. Bioware, Bethesda, recently CD Projekt Red, um, Blizzard. You know, all these companies like they've they produced like some of the best games in the world, but they're all not always going to be on top kind of thing. And that's what I feel like people just didn't learn from uh, when it came to these companies, and they put a lot of stock into CD CDPR. You know, they're they're always like, oh, CDPR is different from Blizzard, or CDPR is different from Bethesda. It's like, no, it's like they're not so different, really. You know, it's it's possible that they might fall. I just don't think that you should put a lot of stock into them as much. That's how I feel, anyways. You never put all of your eggs in one basket, no exactly. matter what it is. Exactly. There's always going to be someone that's better, future or soon. So. Yeah. Or the company's going to mess up sometime soon. Mm-hmm. Eventually. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess not eventually. Well, uh, yeah, I guess it's appropriate to say eventually, or at some point, some things are going to change, for better or for worse. Yeah, that's true. It's nice to be, you know, in the... In that la la land of like, oh my god, it's, it's such a good company, but can't have it all the time. Uh, definitely yeah. cannot. So, so you're playing God of War on PS5? Yes. Uh, I am definitely going to do that again just because of how it would look and the low uh, times. Low times. It doesn't have. I need low screams at all, anyways. So, <laughs> oh yeah, that's just... right. Yeah, because uh, they don't yeah, have a just... yeah. Just pretty fun. I want to play Blood. That's another game that's on there. Bloodborne. Oh, Bloodborne. So when, once you die, it's it's just instantaneous. You're just back. Oh my god. Which I'm hyped for. I um, love that. Updated graphics as well. Not updated graphics, but up to standard, um, which I'm pretty excited for. Uh, I can't remember any other games <laughs> that was on it. So yeah, I'm just I'm just excited to replay some of the games, relive the experiences. Uh, especially since God of War f- five, yes, I think five mm. coming out next year. Yeah, Not next year. probably late no, the, next year. Yeah, yeah, like like basically 2021. Ragnarok yes. is coming out 20. Yeah, which is pretty soon actually. That's kind of surprising that they're coming out with that very early. Uh, I guess not very early since the last God of War was, what, 2016? 2017? 2018. 2018? Damn. Okay, that is pretty early, actually. Three years, yeah. Yeah. That's unless fast. they Unless they already split up the story from, the from like, the very beginning. Then I can see why it would come out really fast. But I, I don't think they expect it to be this, this successful, though. You know? Definitely not. But I feel like it... If the developers liked the story, and obviously the fans loved it, uh, they probably would have just started planning immediately, like, holy crap, this is big. 
Let's just get started right now, okay? Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to see where it goes with the story. We've already talked about it a bunch, so I'm not going to explain. <laughs> yeah. God. Very interesting. Boy. Boy. Is there anything else we've been doing? Watching anime or anything? Uh, I've, I've been trying to catch up with ReZero, the second season. Or, like, trying to make time for that. But I haven't been able to, honestly. Uh, I watched the first season of ReZero, like, four years ago. And new uh -huh. season came out this year, so I was like, oh, let me, I want to see if I can catch up with it. But um, I'm waiting, or I waited until the season was over before I started catching up. So now that it's over, I'm actually going to catch up now. So I'm just waiting. Okay. So I, I'm just like, I'm just waiting to uh, to, have to, f to find the right time to, to start watching, basically. Uh, I watched Tower of God recently, which was... Oh, how would you like that? I personally like it, but I do think it's a little overhyped. Like, I still think it's good. But when people were talking about it, they were talking about Tower of God as if it was, like, the best anime. It's going to be, like, the best anime existence. It's completely different from, like, anything you've watched. And I'm sitting here like, yeah, it's it's different, but it's not like it's anything amazing, right? Like, it's it's still really good, in my opinion. Uh, but it's not amazing. It's not, like... It's not like the top one. It's not gonna dethrone any animes anytime soon. It's not like, it's not a hidden gem like, I don't know, Violet, not hidden, but like Violet Evergarden or The Promised Neverland first season. It's not gonna be anything like that. No, it's, it's still, it's still pretty good, but like it's not over the top good. It that's my that's my opinion on that. Mm -hmm. I I have never watched it. I've I've just been trying to catch up with the major ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, like Attack on Titan, MHA. Yeah. How? Uh, so you've caught up with Attack on Titan, the anime. The anime, yes. Nice. Very interesting, and I am very, very excited for the next season that's coming out later this month. So. Yeah, I might actually. I, I kind of want to catch up to that actually, because it's, it's 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 ending soon, you know. But I don't know if I should catch up to it in the anime or in the manga. Hmm. I, I would say the anime. It's very satisfying. Yeah. For, so it's really good. Really well well done, I guess. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I'm hyped. Um, very hyped. Yeah. You got a lot of screaming Aaron, though. Oh, God, yeah. A lot of Mikasa, too. Ere! That's, I, I know that meme. It's like, Ere! Ah. Ere! Ere! I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've been reading... So, Tower of God is originally uh, a manhwa. Or it's like a Korean webtoon, basically, I think, right? Oh, okay. Right? Um, so, I've been reading I've been reading another manhwa. It's called uh, Solo Leveling. I don't know if I've, if I've mentioned this one yet. But Solo Leveling, I think, right now is like the number one manhwa um, out there. Because it's really, really good. Um, if, if I were to recommend any, any of those... Any any manual out, to out people, it's definitely gonna be solo leveling, um, because it's 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 just a really good, it's a really good like it's, it's I don't know if I'm gonna say it's a shonen, but it kind of feels like a shonen, kind of thing. But it's like uh, you've seen One Punch Man, right? Of course, not yeah. the second season though. Okay, so you know how like the main stick with One Punch Man is that uh, Saitama basically just you know wins every battle. He just ends every battle he he basically like one punches everything and you know the battle's over basically right yeah and he like like it doesn't take itself too seriously um nope yeah solo leveling is kind of like that but it does take itself like kind of seriously We're really taking so the there comes a point in the series where the protagonist you see the protagonist sort of as this really really weak uh person like he's basically like you know he's like the lowest rank hunter in all of south korea or in all, in all of Korea, basically. And then all of a sudden, he gets like a huge... I'm not going to spoil why, but he gets like a huge power-up. And he later becomes like the number one... Or like not the number one, but he basically like becomes like the best hunter. And the way he like... The way he fights, the way he just like dominates his opponents, it's kind of like Saitama where like you know for a fact that he just outclasses his opponents by a lot. And he does it in such a badass kind of way. Um, so it's 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 like One Punch Man in the sense where like nothing can really beat him, you know, like he still struggles, but like nothing can really beat him. 
but the fights don't last like you know one second like he like he doesn't one punch his enemies and then that just that it's not it's not you know taken as a joke it's like actually like in a very serious kind of badass kind of way you know it, it's up there in moments like you know deku versus overhaul or ichigo rescues rescues rukia or naruto arrives in konoha to to, to fight pain kind of thing like it's, you know those badass moments in, in those shonen animes where like the protagonist just does something like badass that's solo leveling but like every other battle so like <laughs> that's what i love about it it's like all the bad it's like it's just one badass moment after another i was like oh my god it's so good i i highly recommend it to people okay what's the name of it again solo leveling solo leveling okay interesting i'd love to take a look at it for sure the only problem is that people uh -oh. are convinced that there's never going to be an anime adaptation for this. Oh, why is that? So, Solo Leveling Loki shit talks Japan in one of the arcs. Uh, or oh. not shit talks, but like they, they point Japan in a bad light, in a sense. Um, and because of, you know, because Japan is like an anime, uh, or because anime is like Japanese uh, dominated, they don't want to animate something that is going to paint them in a bad light. That's what a lot of people are saying. But, uh, I don't know. I feel like it would be a missed opportunity not to... not to animate Solo Leveling. It's it's just that good. Oh, the the art style too is amazing. Art style and the fight scenes are amazing. Interesting. I mean, like I said before, it might be pu bad publicity, but it's still popularity, or it's still popular, so I feel like it would be good for them to animate it anyways. Mm -hmm. But I guess it is entirely up to them. Yeah. They're gonna rig in a lot of money if they do that. For sure. I was trying to this week. I was just so busy, so I was like, I was always telling myself, okay, you know what? I'm gonna watch the next season of Sao. Finally, get caught up. I just oh, sorry, sorry, online. Yeah. How? Okay. How is that actually? Cause I, when when I when I first, uh, not got in, interested into it, but when I first heard about SAO like this was way back then I was still like early college like late high school kind of stuff um there's a lot of like meme videos or there's a lot of videos back then that said that SAO is like one of the worst animes out there or that the first season was great but then like the second season sucked kind of thing what what is your honest opinion on SAO because I actually have never really like delved into it all right my honest opinion about SAO all right to be blunt I do agree that the I don't think the second season, like the next, because uh, you know how like they cut it like in fifty episodes and then they wait a couple years and then start again, right? Oh, that like, I don't know that. Stuff. Actually, I, I've never not, seen this. Not like, like start that. again, but it's like uh, like seasons, like you know, like for a second Titan, yeah. like season one, season two later on. Uh, second season or in quote season for Sao, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, the the guns and then the, the side story with Asuna. Um, what I think it what people disliked was the second part of season one, or technically it is season two, but let's just say season part one, part two. Okay. It was after uh, they got out of the game, the death game, but Asuna was still you know in a coma. Uh, Kirito's uh, uh, the, the partner or love love one. Uh huh. Uh, and she, Asuna just got like a major like. Not, what's the opposite of buff? Uh, nerf? A nerf. <laughs> a nerf. Ooh. She got a nerf. Like, her character just, like, seems so helpless. And, like, honestly, yeah, that did piss me off, like, majorly. Because she was the, one of the strongest characters in the first part. And then the, you, you turn to this scene, it's like, holy shit, she's just a damsel in distress. This is so boring. And then, of course, there was some weird shit with the brother and then sister, cousin bullshit. So... That was yeah, really weird. I heard about that one. That was, I was like, ah, I don't, yeah, feel I don't about know that. about that one, Chief. But yeah. I mean, Sword, I don't know. Sword Art Alabama. <laughs> Sweet home. Yeah, okay. Sweet, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, besides that's... that, okay. Uh, I feel like it's. I honestly love it. Just from what the theme is, it does get better. Like the movies. Our canon, and then the movie builds off into the next season, which is the most recent one. Uh huh. Uh, I've heard mixed things about the third season, more mostly of how it ended. Uh, 
I haven't watched it yet, obviously, but I don't know. I've always liked it, just because it's one of the first animes that I've found by myself, or have gotten interested to by myself without any recommendations, <laughs> though. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly love it, so. How do you feel about the uh, the genre? The, what do you call that? The, it's not Slice of Life, it's, what's the genre called? Isekai. It's like being transported into another world kind of genre. I, that's... Uh, I think, I mean, I honestly like it because it, it kind of just matches it. Like you're, when we play a game, right? Like when we, when I play, when we play Skyrim, for example, mm -hmm. we basically just get sucked into the world just like they do. Yeah. Obviously not with a VR, the extent of VR, but we still spend a lot of time in it, get really invested in the environment, the characters, uh, stuff like that. So I honestly like the genre very much so. Yeah. Um, because I know like it kind of blew up with SAO, but then they also have like the other genres or the other animes like uh, ReZero is technically an isekai, uh, Overlord I think that's what it's called, it's an isekai. Um, I think one of the most popular ones besides ReZero is Konosuba. Because Konosuba is like the complete opposite of ReZero where uh, ReZero is like super dramatic, super serious, super tragedy, and then you have Konosuba that's just like a huge parody of that genre it's just a huge like comedy uh sort of thing so i did watch i did watch re-zero and i well, not re-zero uh konosuba and i did end up loving loving that that series which by the way if you're looking for like a new like isekai to watch besides re-zero i would highly recommend konosuba Konos konosuba is just like really really funny in my opinion uh, interesting i'll put that on the list as well I'm definitely going to be looking for more stuff to watch after I catch up with SAO. That's for sure. Yeah. I've been looking into watching uh, Violet Evergarden. Because I think the movie is coming out. Or like the movie has come out. And apparently it's like really good in an emotional kind of way. So, I mean, I like Your Lie in April. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I have not watched that too, by the way. You haven't watched Your Lie in April? No, I have not. Really? Oh, man. I'm surprised. You know, I am too at this point. <laughs> yeah. I, ex I thought I would have watched it by now, but I'm, I'm just, as a reason, just too busy. Or I know there was a time where I just stopped watching anime too. Yeah. For no reason. I just kind of just didn't watch it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I just, there's a lot of stuff I haven't watched. Because cause you know who recommended me that anime? Who? Jian. Oh, yeah, he recommended me too. Yeah, I was I just like, what? <laughs> yeah. But no, it's 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 a really good it's a really good anime. It's not our typical kind of anime where like there's not gonna be like superpowers in it. It's a, cause it's a slice of life. If it's a good if it's a good story, I'll definitely watch it for sure. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, hey, I love your name, so <laughs> Oh yeah, your name was was nice. I mean there, there's That's some super superpowers into that, you know? Being able to switch bodies kinda thing. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. Not so. voluntary. It's not a voluntary superpower, I guess. It's just kind of a thing. Yeah. God. Definitely cool. Would uh, you... What would you do if you got switch bodies? If you switch bodies with someone like you completely don't know. Wait. So like, with someone else or another gender? Um, I guess with someone else. Let's let's make it interesting. Like just completely random. Okay. If it's someone else, I would probably just. I, w I would like to see how someone else lives their life, right? How, through another perspective. Yeah. So I would probably try and do whatever that person normally does. Like, say, if I get transported into um, a man or woman who's like 10 years older than me, who works every day, goes to work, does whatever the job does, goes home, and then, I don't know, just follow his routine to see how different it is from the body. Yeah. So all I know, all I do know, is just school and stuff. So yeah. I can't really say what it's like to be an adult just yet. So uh, let's so, see here. I don't, really, I don't know what to put a, for a follow-up question in that because I was gonna say if you had the choice to who would you want to switch? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. If you had the choice to uh, switch bodies with a specific person for a day, you know, celebrity. A friend, I guess. I don't know. That's kind of weird. But <laughs> if, you had, if you had a choice to switch bodies with, like, someone, uh, who would it be and why? Ooh. 
and this person wouldn't this person i guess would not have a choice on it like you like or like i guess um let's see how this works uh switch bodies for a day um yeah th so they get to switch bodies with you as well you get to control their body they could they, they get to control your body um who would you pick and why Okay. I would definitely pick um, probably someone who's rich or a billionaire for a day. Okay. Because, uh, like I explained once in the past podcast, that my goal is to just, you know, be wealthy, right? But I just want to see, like, what they go through every day. Because I know Elon Musk, um, Warren Buffett, they spend hours and hours throughout their week just working. I know Elon Musk works a ton. Um, but he's obviously one of the richest men in the world, right? So I just want to like feel like that feeling that, that where they're at and how it truly feels. And like if I do want to become that or try to become that wealthy, right? Or if it's even worth it at that point. That's that's probably the thing that I would just mostly go for. So do you have a specific person in mind? Oh, uh, let's go with... Who's someone? Let's go with Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett seems pretty easy to easy to figure out him. Hmm. Uh, that's probably who I'd go with. What about you? Huh. See, man, I don't know actually, because on one hand, like part of me would just want to switch like bodies with like a politician. I know we're not getting into politics, but like like a politician or someone like. With a completely different lifestyle than us, just to see what it's like being on that side, you know, like what is it like waking up and being responsible for the um, for the welfare of our country, in a sense. Uh, what is it like? What is, what is your routine like? What is your morning like? Um, how how many hours are you really working? Um, what are you really doing in a day? Kind of that stuff like. We, we look at, like, what these people do, but not necessarily how they do it, like, like, from their perspective. Like, I guess, like, if anything else, like, I would like to see what is it like being the president of the United States of America. Uh, uh -huh. Just, like, being, in, like, in this person's shoes, just being like, okay, what, do I, what am I doing? Like, am I really in danger every single day? Or, you know, am I, like, just sitting in the Oval Office, just, I don't know, doing stuff? I, you know what I mean? It's, like... Yeah, I'm just interested to see what the life is like. You know? mm -hmm. I understand that. It's yeah. always curious because like all the movies, you always see them making a ton of decisions every day, bombarded with phone calls, paperwork, signing stuff like that. Uh, I don't even I don't even know if that's completely accurate, but it's definitely interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Uh, how are we on time, by the way? Because I have an idea on how to end this. Well, consider well. Not counting like the first, I think like ten minutes uh, that we cut off, because yeah, you because know, yeah, we were gonna cut some of this off. We are at about an hour and four minutes. I mean, uh, sorry, the, counting the the minutes that we we start off. So I guess oh, we're yeah, like about ten minutes left, right? Yeah, in a sense, yeah. Would you like to do a one v one, one v one match? Oh yeah, let's do that. Okay, what what, what rules do you want to set? Quick scoping, uh, or just all. Anything goes. Um, I think quick scoping would be like kind of interesting. Okay. With what? Uh, with what gun though? Oh, the uh, cray crab or Kraber. Kraber? Yeah, it has to be the Kraber. Okay. Yeah, because it's the strongest rifle, I think. So it's easier just to get one shots. Okay. Uh, right, are we so... only using the Kraber, or can we use like? What's it called? Can we use uh? See, I wish there was like a gun game mode, cause that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Not... Yeah. Let me just, let me just re-download Modern Warfare real quick. Give me like five hours. <laughs> God. Give me like five days. Uh, I'll I mean, hey, I have Black Ops Three downloaded, so that's the thing. I don't have that downloaded. Damn. I mean, I can oh. if I wanted to. I probably nah, can. Nah, nah, you don't gotta. Okay. But well, can we use, I guess we'll have to do. Can we use ordnance? Ordnance. Oh yeah, we can do one v ones. No ordnance, like. Oh, uh, like the tacticals and stuff, or the yeah. lethals. Um, or yeah, is it just want. strictly sniper? Here's what we can do. So, uh, for the mo for the settings, 
Uh, it's going to be a 10 minute match, right? Okay. It's going to be whoever gets the highest points. So the max is 45 points, but whoever gets the highest, right? Okay. And what we'll do, uh, we'll stick with snipers only. Like, that's the only weapon we can use, but we can use anything else. Ordinances. Uh, or yeah, I guess ordinances, because that's technically you're just like, throwing knives. Okay. If you want to do that, use a fire star, because that's technically the, the throwing knife in this game. Okay. And then... Or what you could... Another thing too, if you don't want to use snipers as well, the anti-titan weapon, the charge rifle, is also like a sniper. Because mm. you could just have to charge it up and then aim. Yeah, I remember that back in Apex. It was a yes. week where that was super OP. You could actually aim down sights on that thing in Apex. This one is like more like a third part, more like a hip fire aim down sights. Yeah. But in Apex, you can actually aim down sights and put a sniper scope in that thing. That was not a fun week when it was so powerful. Oh my god, like you would come out of cover and like you would just get shot by like three charge rifles. Yes. So, I think there's a setting like this too. For uh, somewhere. I don't know where it is. But yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm ready. Okay, so what uh, class do you have? Because I have grapple. I just want to make sure it's I, uh, I have grapple. I have grapple, Firestar, Kraber, P2016, charge rifle, power cell, kill for neck breaker. Okay, cool. Let me just set this up. Uh, okay. Let's. All right. So ten minutes max. Um. I'll change the map as well because we've been playing on this. Let's have it a different map. Yeah. Let's do. It's gonna be an interesting podcast. I can't tell if this one's a small one. Okay, yeah, it is a small one. Okay, let's do this. Okay. A one v one to end off. This is different. Yeah. <laughs> God. We we were gonna talk about uh another one v one, MCU Thor versus Kratos. Oh yeah. I guess you guys will have to see you next podcast. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I could, we could probably talk like about it, that forever. Yeah, we could also like, talk about Superman versus Goku. Oh gosh, I I, I wouldn't know honestly with Goku because I don't I don't watch Dragon Ball too much. Oh but, good. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about. That can be the main topic for next time too. I, I had one where right. it's like zombies from The Last of Us or the clickers from The Last of Us versus the zombies from uh, Black Ops. Very open map, is it? Oh, hello. Oh, my. Ah! I forgot that I don't have a. No! How do you switch the R1L1? The. What's it called? The bumpers? Yeah, like if I wanted. If I wanted R1L1. Settings, controls, you change the. Or is it? I have it on custom. So when you see button slash stick layout, it's custom. So you just adjust it there. Oh. So it's not button kicker? Nope. Yep. You manually get to choose your own key or controller binds. So. Which I thought was pretty cool. See where you're at. There you are. Wait. I'm not gonna kill you. Don't worry. Okay. Ready? All right. We'll start. I'll, I'll move away. Okay. Okay. Make sure your weapon's reloaded. Is unlimited ammo in this? Yep. Oh, that's awesome. I'm ready. Okay. Three, this... two, one. Let's go. This looks like uh, the ship from Among Us. 
Oh, there's, yeah. a, there's a service room. I was like, oh, servers? Where are you? It's like Halo. Wow! This will just expose us for how bad we are at this game. Ooh, nice. <laughs> nice. Do you watch okay. the kill camps? Uh, I usually don't. Uh, only if it's something if it's a good one. Like I feel like I'm like, oh shit. That okay. was a good one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that was just a quick scope. <laughs> I'm just trying to get in the game here. Oh god. Yeah, people. I'm not the best at when it comes to what's it called. Third-person shooters, or not third-person shooters, uh, 3D movement Boy. shooters. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually playing this in third-person. Oh god. I haven't quickscoped with, like, jumpers since BO3. Holy crap. Oh, I'm using X, bro. Press the We're really winning this. I can't- I can't do bumper-jumper. I'm not Lucio anymore. God, I miss Overwatch! Oh, I flicked too hard. I can't see where I'm going. Oh, no. <laughs> I hesitated. Interesting. Hesitation that was really hard. is defeat. We just do. We, this could just be the podcast. Like, we could just be talking the entire time. <laughs> oh, nice one, dude. No, no, so Watch that one. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I was like, what? Is there... Oh, hello. Oh, nice. Bang. Jump shot. Let's go. Nice. Oh, speaking of uh, hesitation is defeat. Did you see the new uh, Sekiro update? No, I know you've been playing it sometime. Yeah. Okay, so they added a boss rush to the game. And now you can play any boss that you want individually. That's really cool. I yeah. love that. So now I don't have to go back to the entire story just to play the final boss. Oh, hello. They need to do that for Bloodborne, dude. Yeah, I'm surprised Sekiro got like that big of a DLC update. Oh, there's a gym here. God, I'm so glad you're not good at this game anymore. Otherwise, I'd be <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I got nice. stuck midair. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, I don't think we ever did a 1v1 sniper in Modern, Modern Warfare. Warfare. You want to redownload that? <laughs> Don't do that? Oh no. Uh, it's too late. It's gone. It's too late. It's gone. <laughs> Let's just do that in Black Ops. Cold War. Yeah. I still i am very indifferent about the sniping in that game. It just doesn't feel like this feels really satisfying. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Um, Modern Warfare? Modern Warfare stepping was really nice. I loved it. I loved it. it. It was honestly almost perfect. There's not a lot I would fix, actually, or change. Yeah. Um... Uh, what's it called? Oh, I got stuck in Norway. Um... There's a lot of things oh, that, nice shot. yeah. There's a lot of things that I think we never got to do in Modern Warfare. Um, one of it being, what's it called? One of it being nukes. We never, we never went for nukes, or at least not as much. I feel like having nuke or going for a nuke. I think the closest I got was like 21. Oh, hello. Uh huh. Wait, we're, we're like without kill streaks like... or without? Yes. Yeah. Cause remember, I didn't start using kill streaks until like. Oh nice. I'm gonna use kill chain. Yeah. Well, I started using kill chain. I'm like, oh, this is fun, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, free chopper gunner, <laughs> free AC-130. Exactly. I don't know, cause I, I kind of just like playing the game to see how far I can get without without using score streaks. That's how I, usually how I've always played. Yeah. Until this game. Ah! Leave me alone. Uh, um, it just seems like really stressful to go for, and I'd be really pissed every nah, time. I yeah, close. yeah, you're right. Uh, I I remember when I was when I was playing Modern Warfare Three, 
every single game i would always go for a nuke just because i've always won one um it was super it was super stressful like if you were like even one off or like if you were like five off or whatever you're like you start panicking and you start like getting tense or whatever like that and then like when you get killed it's like oh my god i was so close kind of thing um but yeah it was it was very stressful but at the same time like that's kind of like how i got good in call of duty um, yeah because like you now i know focused. yeah because like once once you go for nukes like even if you don't get it you're used to going for like high kill streaks and be a being a little aggressive so it kind of makes you like a better player so when you start going for like regular kill streaks like even like an eight kill streak it's a lot easier than going for a nuke because then you don't have to uh what's it called oh <laughs> that's a watch, watch that watch that <laughs> a no scope yeah oh my god <laughs> are we doing nice. um charge rifle yeah we could try that i just right. switched it up oh yo <laughs> This is a long. Oh, nice. nice! I was like just a little bit off you. This is a this is a long uh, charge rifle charge. I told you. There's a thing that makes it faster. I just don't have it on. Oh, I see. Nice. Again, damn it! <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, what's it called? In Apex, this thing deals damage even while charging. What do you mean? Oh, like with the secondary? Wait, I don't even know how that works. So, like, you know how like it's charging, right? It's already firing while it's charging. Interesting. They don't stand a chance. We're winning big time. I'm like thrown off because like I'm like letting go. Of this. Oh, you don't have to charge it all the way. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm like okay. letting go as it's uh as it's charging because like I thought like I thought that's when it would end, but that's not how it ends. Dang, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna change that. I'm stuck. This is fun, dude. Honestly, we should do our next podcast just doing one v ones. I'm down. Just, we just gotta just... find another probably another game or something. Yeah. Well, I'm done. I'm done with just doing this too. Whoa! Wait, I cannot die. You gotta hit what? I had to pause for that. <laughs> I had to pause for that. What? Oh, that was crazy. Is that even possible? I don't. I guess it is now. Ah! I stopped. Damn. Ah! Uh, oh, is there like, again? Again? Right there. Yeah. What, what? is this? Get out of here! How did that happen? No way. <laughs> oh, that was fun. God, that was fun, yeah. Our next podcast should be just like that, honestly. I I, I am down. I am down. <laughs> just 1v1s. All right. What game? <laughs> I guess with Black Ops 3? I'm down for that. And we can play Gun Game on there, too. That would be pretty fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got a story about that one. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I, got a, I, that's, I call it like my greatest Call of Duty moment. Should I tell it now or should I tell it next podcast? You know, we should tell it in the next podcast. Yeah. Let's do that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. That was a very different podcast. Different we... episode. Yeah, Enjoyable, but... though. It's yeah, now, now we got like an idea of like what we want to do next time. You know? Huh. We should. The unpaused pause menu podcast. The unpaused, mess... <laughs> the unpaused pause yeah. menu podcast. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, three this... different type of episodes now. This is pretty cool. I know. All right, guys. All right. Thank you so much for watching our 12th episode of Pause Menu Podcast. The unpaused episode of Pause Menu Podcast. Uh, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.